One year. That's how long it's been since a violent mob attacked the U.S. Capitol, attempting to forcibly overturn our presidential election. That's how long it's been since one of the worst days in American history. A day that ended in despair and death. A day we must ensure is never repeated. In the wake of that attack, I issued a challenge to my fellow Americans. Will we prey on people's fears or draw upon their hopes? Will we feast on anger or summon better angels? Will we lead America forward and upward? One year later, these are still the right questions. And we as a country still need to choose the right answer. Some say it's time to move on from January 6th, but we can't move on without addressing what happened or by pretending it never happened. We can't move on without taking action to make sure it never happens again. That starts by admitting the facts. The 2020 election was not stolen. Joe Biden won and Donald Trump lost. We have to admit it, but the leadership of the Republican party won't. They lied to the American people and they still are. I said last year that the Republican party has lost its way. That's still the case. Our so-called leaders refuse to lead. They're stoking division. While they should be tackling the root causes that led to January 6th, anger, fear, and hopelessness. We need solutions to these real problems. We don't need to pour gasoline on the fire, but that's exactly what's happening and it's getting worse. To this day, too many politicians have chosen lies over truth, anger over progress, fear over hope, and division over unity. They think it'll be good for their careers, but they should be asking what's good for our country. If the past 12 months have taught me anything, it's that saving America is the fight of our lives. This time last year, I hoped victory would come in a matter of months. Now I see it will take years. That's why I'm transitioning from serving just one corner of Illinois into fighting this new nationwide mission full time. When I took a stand against the forces and the failures that gave us January 6th, the response I received was overwhelming. I heard from people from all walks of life, Republicans, Democrats, independents, conservatives, liberals, and moderates. They don't agree on everything. Actually, they don't agree on most things. But after January 6th, they all know this, that we can do better, that we can be better. And despite everything that's happened in the past year, America is better and we always will be. They're right, you're right. And it's up to us, all of us, to show our country the right path. That starts by acknowledging a simple fact. The political class and cable news don't represent the America that I love. Our leaders prey on tribalism and extremism by stoking it. We want common ground and common sense. They profit by making our problems worse. We want proven solutions that make our country stronger. Ultimately, so many politicians and pundits won't do what needs to be done. So the American people have to do it ourselves. What we do in the days ahead will determine whether America moves away from January 6th or moves towards an even bigger crisis. It matters how we vote, not just in the big elections, but in primaries too. A lot of people think their vote won't make a difference, but believe me, it does. Your vote can make all the difference for America's future, but you gotta show up first. And it matters who we listen to. There are so many shrill voices out there. There are a lot of celebrities who peddle conspiracy, people who get big by being small. So we gotta tune them out, tell them no thanks. We gotta seek facts over fiction. Finally, it matters what we ask of ourselves. For too long, we've looked to our leaders to make everything better. We've asked them to do more and more, yet in return, we've gotten less and less. But politicians aren't the real power in America. The American people are. The kid from the south side of Chicago, the suburban mom from Wheaton, the factory worker from Rockford, the small business owner on Main Street, all of us together are stronger than each of us alone. We have the ideas and insights, the values and vision to solve any problem and overcome any challenge. And we all have a duty to step up and act. 
in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in our group texts, and in our daily lives. The answers won't come from Washington, D.C. The answers will come from we the people. It's long past time we asked ourselves instead of others. That's the story of my life. Not long after 9-11, I did what so many others did. I signed up to serve in the uniform of the United States against an enemy that attacked us, because I knew America's worth defending. But I couldn't wait for someone else to do it. I had to step up. I had to do my part to protect my country and preserve our freedom. And I wasn't alone. On this anniversary of January 6th, let's confront the anger, fear, and hopelessness that brought that dark day about. Let's defeat the despair that grips our country. We are in the fight of our lives. We can win. We can do this. Victory won't come in a day, a month, or even a year. But victory will come. I promise you that. And the American people will deliver it like we always have.